it, assuming fan, if, if you feel confident in your Fantastic Four project, here's what I would do. The next movie is from Doom's perspective and the Fantastic Four is a supporting cast of his movie. The entire movie is from his point of view, not from the hero's point of view. And, and, and we see the Fantastic Four as villains almost? Yes. Wasn't much of a dynasty. That's that's the understatement of the day. <laughs> right. Oh, man. How wrong they were. I always give people grace in saying that Michael Jordan missed some shots, yo. He missed some game winners. He didn't win them all. Right? Kobe, all of them, all of the greats struck out every once in a while. And the NCU struck out and putting in their and, and going for the grand slam with Jonathan Majors for their next uh phase or phases or saga. And it seems they and I think this is something we alluded to, Brian, in our Loki show. They ended it so gracefully that we really don't have to really think about Kang anymore the way they ended Loki Brian I really didn't think about Kang when that when that when that show ended Brian I didn't think about Kang I thought about how dope it was and that's it Jonathan Majors golf clap to him he did a fantastic job as Victor Time I enjoyed his performance once again but Disney has obviously chosen to move forward. Brian, your thoughts on how they've gone about things with transitioning over to now what has been talked about ever since Multiverse of Madness, Submariner. The little breadcrumbs of certain things and, and people attached to Doom. What do you think about this uh, and, and just the fallout of yeah. the Kang Dynasty? Yeah, well, the, the Kang Dynasty has been subverted, overthrown, shut down, <laughs> picked off. Yeah. yeah. Um, Look, I mean, as we said, this has never been about Jonathan Majors, the performer. It's interesting to read that one of the things going around is that, you know, the audience has not, the performance has not resonated with the audience. And I find that disingenuous because if you just list his appearances in the MCU, yeah. his, his most extensive screen time is in the TV series that is Marvel's highest rated, high, highest regarded series. Now, granted, he's not the only reason why. I probably wouldn't have him as the number one reason why. But I challenge anyone to say that his performance in that series is somehow pushing audiences away or not resonating. That's complete revisionist history. So then you're left with the box office disappointment that was Quantumania as really the only other time we saw him on screen. So it is, is Disney trying to lay the box office egg that was quantum mania at the foot of Jonathan majors, not mm. capturing the audience. That's an atrocity in and of itself. That's not yeah. true. Yeah. He's the, he's one of the better parts of a very flawed movie. Yeah. And by the way, as bad as the movie, as, as bad as the movie petered out, it did open to a, over a hundred million dollars opening weekend. I don't buy that. That that narrative that clearly to me is probably being hatched by someone inside Disney to explain what they're course correcting here. I just don't buy it. What I do buy is they want out of the Jonathan Majors business mm -hmm. for the legal uncertainty. And that's what we have to call it. You know, we don't know. There isn't resolution. But with the MCU ship sinking, and that is what it's doing, <laughs> we'll talk about the Marvels in another show. They can't afford to have this linchpin of the multiverse saga that's already struggling become this Ezra Miller level black eye by the time they get to an actual Avengers movie. So 
This is one of those cases where there has been no formal announcement, people. Okay, so Jonathan Majors is still officially and contractually playing the part of Kang. But let's look at the information and the evidence that's out there. In the Loki finale, there is clearly a very deliberate scene of a young Victor Timely no longer receiving the TVA manual in the time loop, implying he never goes on to become he who remains, which in theory was kind of the the victor of this original multiversal war that set us on this whole saga path in the first place. That is clearly to me a retcon scene. I don't know, do you disagree? And that clearly look what's meant to me is like a hey, we are tying that off from the yeah. beginning. Yeah, yeah. And Loki is now sitting at the end of time, a beloved character holding all of this together in what is now a different branched universe. Yeah. Second piece of evidence. Jeff Loveness, the writer of Quantum Mania, the writer of Kang Dynasty, has been removed entirely oh, from yeah. the proceedings. If you read his public comments, he was very open about saying the number one thing he was focused on, the number one thing he was most excited about was writing Kang. This reportedly was something that he championed. He's out entirely. The director, who we know actually from Shang-Chi, Destin Cretton, who's been attached to this movie from the beginning. This is the third. This is the third one, right? The third piece of evidence? Yeah. Third piece of evidence came out this week. He is no longer the director. Now, he's still on good terms with Marvel, in theory, because they said he is now going to work on developing a sequel to Shang-Chi. Will anyone even remember who Shang-Chi is by the time we get that sequel? <laughs> but... That's another show. But he is no longer attached, which means the entirety of the Kang Dynasty project as it was originally conceived, no longer exists. Which means it is going to be renamed, people, as something else. And there, and Jonathan Majors won't be part of the MCU going forward. Yeah. Time to move on. Obviously, um, that is leading towards Doom. I think it's interesting they didn't recast because the, the way this character is written in a multiversal sense, it could, in theory, have been recast and made sense in the context of the broader story. Now, obviously, the Majors had set a high bar for performance, but I think it's interesting that it does seem, by you know, all the evidence we can find, that they are really just moving away from the entirety of this arc they were on that was supposed to head towards Secret Wars. And I'm assuming Secret Wars still seems like the plan because of what's going on in Deadpool 3 and this, you know, credit scene at the end of the Marvels and all that sort of stuff. But it, now it seems like how we get there and what's supposed to happen there just will no longer involve Kang in any meaningful way. Yeah. And that is Brian fine with me. And I think, I think for the most part, uh, people are fine with it. But let's take so all right, let's segue here to Doom. Do you th think this is a solution or a compounding of the problem? That all depends on how I do it, is my answer to that. Because Doom is Doom is is one of those Brian, honest I don't know, Brian, if you've seen there's a this guy called uh Comics Explained. I'm pretty sure you know you've heard of him on YouTube. He, yeah. He, so he, he did a series talking about um, or describing the series where they did a, a, a it was like four books or a four part series of Doom and his story. And that would be the approach I would go with Doom because Doom is not one of those characters that you he's not an Ultron or oh, how they did Ultron right he's one of those he's not a one and done we have to like and dislike him uh, and from what I've heard Brian I heard there was a rumor that Mad Mickelson is probably is being looked at yes that, your that thoughts works. on that I need to know your thoughts on this <laughs> I mean look Mad Mickelson obviously played a very forgettable villain in Kaecilius in the original Doctor Strange movie. And we've seen actors, you know, play more than one part. And obviously Doom spends a lot of time behind a mask. So, you know, Mickelson 
well noted for playing villains and sinister villains, has a distinct affect and voice. It can work. <clears throat> I mean, you know, again, it's not about his physical appearance because that dooms and dooms in a costume behind the mask, but um, it can work. I mean, the voice is distinctive. I could see it. I mean, I could see it. But I am, I am very nervous. I am nervous about a mid saga course correction because one very notable comics villain did not work. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid they will rush one of the great, what should be one of the great villains that they have flubbed twice already on screen. Mm -hmm. And we will be left being like, instead of getting a completed Kang, we got half a Kang and we got a half baked Victor Von Doom. And we actually compounded our problems in doing so. I'm very nervous about this. I got to be honest. And to me, I think the real solution, which if they had the spine to do it, is to take the Avengers movies off the calendar entirely. To me, that's the right answer. Yes. Because they're not ready to yes, do yes, that. Yes, 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 yes. I understand the financial <clears throat> implications of doing that because those movies generate so much box office. But the financial implications of blowing this when people are already down on your product to me is worse. I agree 100%, Brian. I think your billion-dollar franchises should come from the X-Men, should come from Fantastic Four, should come from those... You should. You have to get those other movie like... Again, you cannot go in with the expectation of your first film being a billion dollars. You can't. I like your idea of a Doom movie, especially in the context of Venom working as well as it did, even though those movies aren't great. To me, it's... And now, Sony's obviously going way down the path of the anti-hero with mixed results. But this idea of like a very complex villain being the lead of his own movie, to me, is much more interesting then shoehorning him into this saga that's already flawed and saying, here, fix it. If you wanted to show his face, you can go down the route of going and doing that series about how Victor Van, Van Doom talks to this, this reporter and talks to his, and talks to her about his life, about how he grew up. Uh, telling her stories about his life and how he became who he was and how he describes his his Reed Richards and, and his torment about his mother and all this stuff, the, the connection with Mephisto and all that. There's a lot there. You can do that in the Disney Plus series, but certainly, Brian, you'd have to do it in a way that uh, I think... If, to me, Brian, the purpose of Disney Plus was to speed up these these bigger events and make it a, a movie event, not make it se entirely separate from from the MCU on in Disney Plus. I think it would be, but so I do not think Von. I, I think if they go Doom, I do not think Doom Wolf make his first appearance on Disney Plus. And the reason I don't think that is because they're going to look at Kang having made his first appearance on Disney Plus as maybe having been a mistake from a financial standpoint. It wasn't from a creative standpoint. It actually gave legitimacy to Loki season one. It was a brilliant moment. But I think if they go to Doom, Doom's first appearance is going to come on the big screen. And I think so they're going- be, So they should go, you know, yeah, so they should do the movie, right? Uh, yes. A, a solo movie. And I think that's, I don't know if they'll do a solo movie, but I think it'll be more <clears> like Thanos. It'll be more like, you know, it's like when people started to get that buzz about Ledger's performance in The Dark Knight. I realize that's a high bar, but just that idea of like, imagine if you had seen Ledger's Joker on Max in a series before he did Dark Knight. I actually think it probably does take away from his impact in The Dark Knight if you had already seen him do it in six episodes. Whereas he gets on screen in that first scene in the bank what robbery and you're like, whoa, what are we in for here? But this is the thing, Brian. With with Doom, if you do, let's say you was do the series, you do the series where you don't see him in the mask, right? You perhaps see him in the mask at the end of the, his season or whatever, right? 
Uh, and then the rest of the movie, he's in his mask. I don't necessarily need to see him without a mask when he meets the Fantastic Four. Possibly flashbacks, I don't know. But I don't want to get into to this habit where these characters, especially one like Victor Von Doom, is without his mask, man. I'm I agree with that. seeing that joint. Peter, not to go too far, and we'll wrap this up um, soon, but the Spider-Man No Way Home set the bar with the identity thing. No one knows who he is. No one is supposed to know who he is anymore. He is not supposed to be running around, taking off his mask, looking for stuff. With his hand in his mask. <laughs> or, or no, with his mask in his hand, running around. No. So we can't have Doom with his mask off. I want to see Doom <clears throat> say the things he says. Because that's one arrogant dude. But he says his his stuff, the stuff that he says are classic things, man. And to lessen that, I think, is a huge mistake. Final final words, Brian. Here's how I would do it. I would actually do it after Fantastic Four. It, assuming fan, if, if you feel confident in your Fantastic Four project, here's what I would do. The next movie is from Doom's perspective, and the Fantastic Four is a supporting cast of his movie. The entire movie is from his point of view, not from the hero's point of view. And, 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 and we see the Fantastic Four as villains almost? Yes. That's very interesting. So you leave the movie kind of sympathetic to Doom's cause after having just seen the Fantastic Four as heroes. <laughs> wow, what a twist. That's how I would do what it. What a twist. Because then you would buy what comes next. Yeah. Yeah. That is that is excellent. Yo, you send the contracts, yo. Send the NDAs. <laughs> you know, put us up in some nice houses and just let it work. <laughs> That's right. Simple. It's not gonna cost you a whole bunch of money. It's gonna cost you a hell out of a, a hell of a lot of money trying to bring everybody back, though. Oh, that's that's a terrible idea. I wouldn't do that. But yeah. well. let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this, of how they should do do doom. Uh, do you care about Shang Chi? We gotta do a show about Shang Chi, Brian. I know you probably excited. I know you probably jump for joy. Not me. No offense to him, but he's on another path. I think. Uh, uh, in terms of what he wants to do, he may want to want to do. He may want to do Shang Chi, but I don't know. I don't know how that's going to turn out in terms of negotiations. I don't know. They probably have some contract, but I don't know how that's going to turn out, Brian. <laughs> uh, and yeah, Cran is out. Do we get even Secret Wars now? Uh, do they? Is this a big course correction? Do Avengers need to be the focal point now? I mean, yes, they made you billions of dollars. Yes, but you got to have more than just the Avengers. The X-Men are supposed to give you billions of dollars. Fantastic Four supposed to give you some billions of dollars if you put Spider-Man in there because they interact with everybody. They got to deal with everybody. So there's a bunch of opportunities there to get you a billion dollars. But you can't, you can't do Goofy. I'm sorry. You do Goofy... That money is not going to, that billion dollars is not going to be there for you. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah!